Alright, you guys, I'm going to try to look up my Lubashi first bath. It's Azeka, A Z E K A H H, for those who have, those who listen to After Years. Alright, so right now I'm going back to DeviantArt, which is where I read that one, but I typed in it in at Google, and then there's Chogdor, so. Little Dashy. First. So, my little dashi first bath. Okay. Step, step, dashi, I called out. A few tiny hoof taps sounded against the wooden flooring in my house. A particular sign Philly darted around the corner and skidded to a stop in front of me, gazing up at my face with those large, innocent, violet, violet eyes of hers. She blinked. Not only a week ago had she uttered her first words, but just recently she had been exploring the house while I was away at work. I set my keys in the cupboard above the sink. I normally keep them in before reaching down and grabbing the filly with both hands, setting her on the countertop by the sink. She sat down on her haunches and continued staring up at me as I cranked the handle on the sink and engraved with a large H. Water poured out the nozzle which quickly snagged her attention. I had retrieved water for her before via the sink as my refrigerator's water dispenser had been broken since before my parents passed. But from her diminute vantage point she had never actually witnessed the water flowing from the pipe she leaned over and her eyes started her eyes starting to tear up I stroked her technicolor mane oh right, wait I'm sorry she leaned over the sink and tried to drink from the stream I couldn't suppress a chuckle I used to do that when I was younger suddenly she recoiled sharply with a cry as the steaming hot water burned her lips she lied down and put both hooves in her mouth, her eyes starting to tear up. I stroked her technicolor mane, which seemed to calm the soft whimpers emanating forth from her tiny vocal cords. Ow, ow. Dashi muttered under her breath. I felt guilty. I should have warned her of the water's temperature before she took a sip. With my other hand... I reached over and opened the refrigerator door, retrieving an ice-cold bottle of water <coughs> from a pack I had recently bought before settling it down in front of her, letting the fridge's door shut by itself under its own weight. After er, a few days ago, I had decided I would buy bottled water for her instead of giving her tap water like I had always done. My dashi deserved only the best I could manage. She began licking the condensation from the sides of the bottle, enjoying the cold feeling on her scorched lips. I picked it up for a moment, unscrewed the cap, and before and unscrewed the cap before holding the open bottle to her. She attempted to grab at it with both hooves, only slightly managing to grasp it due to the slick sides, so I continued holding it for her, enabling her to drink without dropping the bottle. She placed the bottle against her lips and I tilted it forward slightly so that the water would flow. She drank eagerly, eagerly, but stopped after only an estimated one-twelfth of the bottle. Maybe it was due to how small she was. The, the, thank you, Dad, Daddy. 
She started her young quiver, her young lips quivering, to find the right sounds. I had set, I set the bottle down, to bend over and rub my forehead against hers. Any time, Dashie. Ever since she had learned to speak, she had been referring to me as Daddy. Several times I've told her my real name, but she always forgot. She would just dress me by it for a few short minutes. But if I so much as left the room and came back or changed the topic, she again smoked, spoke to me with Daddy. Does she really think of me as a parent? She doesn't really strike me as my child. Because after all, we were a different species. But yet, I feel this. Attachment to her. In the back of my mind. I shook it off. I'll think about it later. Right now I need to bathe. That's this smelly little filly. Noticing that the sink was full of water. I turned off the nozzle and gently picked up the filly. Lifting her small body over the pool of liquid. She was small enough to fit in the sink. So there was no problems with that. My intent was to bathe her. And... I had even gone to the supermarket and picked out sensitive skin shampoo prior to this, just in case regular shampoo would cause a burning sensation or something. Now she smelled like a wet dog, to put it simply. I wasn't sure if I should bathe her once a week like um, a dog or make her bathe every day. Eh, I'll figure it out. I didn't notice that the water was still steaming and incredibly hot. I obvi obliviously lowered her into the pool of liquid, but she began squirming at the sensation of steam curling around her side for her and looked at me with large, violet, rimmed eyes. D Daddy! D n Daddy, no! 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 She squeaked, her small side wings flapping ineffectively. I lifted her away from the water, setting her... Back in the cavern of the set. To the side. About to ask her what was wrong, but she quickly scampered away from the sink. She overshot her mark and fell down to the wooden floor with a yelp. I quickly ran to her relief, washing her hands. I saw she had landed without any harm. I picked her up again, which caused her to resume her squirming. But a soft shh from me caused it to gradually die down. I set her on the countertop again by the sink, but she backed away from the water, stuck my finger into it, only to quickly react as I, as, wait, only to quickly retract as, retract it as I realized how hot the water was. I heard Dashy whimpering and picked her up again, holding her tightly to my chest with one arm as I used the other arm to flick a switch on my counter to drink some of the water from the sink. I turned on the cold water, knowing that it would lower the temperature of the bath water and let it flow until I could stick my finger inside the pool and not be burnt. Dashi, I'm sorry. I made the water too hot. It's better now. I said, softly stroking her mane again. She stared up at me from the crook of my elbow. I could see her, her mouth moving, trying to pronounce the letter W. What? Wa what? She mimicked. Her gaze darting from me to sink and back. I picked her up again with both hands, attempted to lower her in the sink one more. She whimpered slightly, staring down at the liquid, but once her back legs dipped into the pleasantly lukewarm fluid, her fearful expression shifted to one of curiosity. I let her sink completely into the liquid. Her curious expression shot back to fear as the water swallowed her up to her neck. She began squirming again, splashing water all over me. Dashi, it's okay. I'm just trying to get you clean. I explained. She seemed to understand and quit her feeling, sitting still. What? Wh why? She asked in that tiny voice of hers. I found myself laughing at the irony. I didn't expect her to understand what why she needed to take baths. After all, she is a child. 
My laughter was only met with more confusion, as I could see from her amethyst eyes, semi-concealed by her wet, now, now wet mane, which hung limply in front of her face. Just hold still. You'll be, you'll like being clean, Dashie, I promise. I reached the bottle of shampoo I had bought specifically for her and popped the cap before squeezing some of the green gel into the filly's rainbow hair. She looked up at the bottle above her head with large, curious eyes. Trying to be as gentle as possible, I started rubbing her all over with it. A simple gel erupting into a mountain of white bubbles. Dashie was scared at first, but gradually she started giggling at the bubbles floating around her head on the surface and on the surface of the water. I smiled at her, finding the scene to be too adorable to go without a picture. I dipped my hands into the bath water to rinse the soap off of them before walking into the other end of the kitchen to fetch my camera, which I left so conveniently placed on a stool next to an outlet in the wall. Upon it, Sighting it, I realized something. I didn't take any pictures of Dashie yet, and this was a magnificent opportunity. I smiled widely and grabbed the camera, zipping in front of the bathing filly and holding it in front of her. She looked at the camera cautiously, even nodding backwards and a little in her impromptu bathtub. Smile, Dashie, I told her, and, gr and grinned from ear to ear myself. Hoping it would rub off to her, it did. She smiled and began playing with the bubbles again, and I, and I chuckled and snapped as I snapped the picture. Then she froze at the bright flash. Her erysis constricted. Her, wait, erysis constricted, and she started whimpering in fear. Her, her, her eyes folding as she pressed herself against the back wall of the sink. I was going to take more pictures, but I decided it was better to just slip the camera into my pocket and take them later. I looked at her sympathetically, rubbing the shampoo in her hair again. Dashie, it was just a picture. It's so we'll always remember this. It's okay. She calmed down at my touch. A good five minutes passed, filled with <coughs> our shared giggling, the kitchen being filled with soap bubbles. And Dashie shying away from me when I attempted to wash her. No, no, please. She insisted to do it herself without me watching. So I looked away. Before I turned on the faucet and moved her under it, she giggled even more at the warm water rushing over her. But closed her mouth and began spinning with some of the rinse soap. When some of the rinse off soap flowed into her muzzle. Eventually, I rinsed all the suds off and laid a nearby towel next to the sink for Dashie. She climbed out of the water onto it without my assistance, receiving praise for me for doing all so all on her own. Before gazing up at me with the most adorable grin on her face. I had just slipped my hands under the towel in preparation to wrap it around Dashie for drying when she decided it would be a good idea to shake the water off like a dog. D Dashie, I playfully called, lifting my arms to shield myself from the shower of water droplets that flew from her tiny, sighing body. When she was done, I tried. I dried her with the towel anyway, shaking the water off only removes so much. Now, now, Dashie, you can't be doing that. It's not proper. Use a towel like I am now. Personally, I didn't believe that human adequate laws applied to ponies, but I didn't want water being flung all over me each time I bathed her. So I figured this was the right thing to tell her. She found at me for a moment before nodding. Uh, okay, d Daddy, she said, giving in. I pulled her into a hug, which she gladly returned, me noticing that she smelled like green apples. It was a shampoo. Either way, I sat her on the ground, and she happily scampered off to the living room. Before stopping upon the realization that I wasn't following her, she tried it back to the kitchen and stared up at me. 
Daddy, are you coming? She stuttered, her unfamiliar unfamiliarity was speaking, taking grasp on her lips once more. I laughed to myself and walked to her before bending over her and picking her up, walking to the living room with her. An idea suddenly formed inside my head. She was a Pegasus, right? Wouldn't she enjoy flying or anything else close to it? I decided to test my theory and held her high above my head. She gasped suddenly and quickly began giggling, mixed in with the occasional wee as I walked to and fro around the room. I laughed along with her, seeing her joyful face from below as she flapped her small wings, pretending to be flying. I haven't known Dashy for very long, but I love her. She's a shining ray of hope, a possibility, of a future in my dull, monochromatic life. Seeing her happy, no matter what the source may be, sparks that same unfamiliar yet familiar feeling in my heart and time. Heart time and time again. Enjoy. So that was the first bath, and that is by Garu Spike. G A R U U Spike.